Now the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest-running TV fishing show. Now I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today. Hello, everybody. All anglers agree that fishing is all about acquiring knowledge, and you can really learn something on every trip. The more you go, the more you know. And what a blessing that is for those of us that love this sport. And it's probably no coincidence that they call groups of fish schools either. With that in mind, let's consider the benefits of the more you know. And with that said, let's go. Get out of that bush. Don't go in those pads. I guess I'm going to have to come back and get you. I don't want to... I'm going to lift you up. There we go. There it is. It's a little fat one, isn't it? All right, we'll put you back. Here we go. Well, we've got a north wind. And a north wind really doesn't bother me that much, except when it's blowing real, real strong after a front. And we've had a front but we've got to deal with it. But one thing that I do hate is an east wind. If you fish very long, you've heard fishermen say, when out of the east, fish bite the least. Well, what does that really mean? Well, first of all, the direction of the wind really doesn't affect fishing. I've caught them in all wind directions, except when it was blowing so hard, I couldn't get out or too strong to fish a particular area. However, there is some truth about wind direction, which actually lies in the barometer. That's right, it deals with fronts. A strong, brisk north or east wind will, as a general rule, indicate a weather change. Therefore, a change in the barometric pressure. Now, a gusty south or west wind usually indicates a slow change in weather conditions, thus minor changes in pressure. It's not that the east wind affects fish behavior, it's a barometric pressure that affects the wind and the fish behavior. Now speaking of barometric pressure, as a general rule, I'll normally fish shallower water on falling pressure and deeper on a rise. Now something else, normally pressure systems are more important during late fall, winter, and early to mid spring, simply because that's when fronts are the strongest. Whoa, boy. Little guy. Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, 
Catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly. Today's conditions log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. Say good morning to me. Oh, calm down. All right, you don't want me to open your mouth. I'll just get you like that. Let you go right back where you were. Already floating along, here's one about moving water. Bill, I've often heard you guys say that rivers and creeks can be more productive during the dog days of summer. Can you explain why? They sure can, and here's some excellent reasons why moving water can be so doggone productive. Moving water tends to remain cooler than the water on a lake during the hot months of summer. Rivers and creeks seem to be more stable also during this period. Oxygen levels are usually higher as a result of the mixing currents. Current positions bass in well-defined areas, especially eddy waters, mouth of tributaries, behind current deflecting objects, and slow transition current locations. Rivers generally have slightly more stained water than the reservoirs, making fish more shallower and approachable. And finally, rivers usually situated in the valley or lowland areas, shielding anglers from strong winds. Yep, moving water in our rivers and creeks are excellent places to fish during the dog days of summer. Where's that fish going? Wee! Look at that rascal pull. Howdy. Healthy looking little thing. We messed my worm up a little bit. Okay, did you know that it's smart to buy sunglasses that block ultraviolet rays? Now, good sunglasses that block UV will be labeled. So look for that information before you buy. Anglers hear a lot about harmful effects of UV light. So let me explain that. UV is short for ultraviolet which is a portion of the light spectrum invisible to the human eye. UV is what causes sunburn and can cause your eyes to feel dry and irritated after a day in the sun. This, in effect, is your eyes sunburning. But even worse, UV can cause premature development of cataracts, retinal degeneration, and skin cancer around the eyes. If sunglasses don't block UV, the tint of the lenses will cause your pupils to dilate slightly and your eyes will be subject to higher amounts of UV. Now, a good pair of sunglasses, like what I wear, solar bat, will filter the ultraviolet rays. There we go. Strong little rascal. Fatty, too. Mm 
Yes, you are. Today's show is brought to you in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Quantum, performance tune. Mystic Lubricants, lubrication domination. And Tracker Boats, fish the finest. Today's equipment log is brought to you by Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. Whether you're fishing for panfish, bass, catfish, or light saltwater, we have an action for you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley Catch More Fish. Bill Dance Exclusive Rods by Quantum. And by Garmin. Fight your fish, not your fish finder. Coming on around, coming on around. I mean, a buster. That one. Whoa, that's a pretty one. I see, you, buddy. Whoa. Hey, are you aware that some artificial baits do a better job of catching big bass when others fail? Let me tell you why I believe that. It's the lure profile. You know, a bass learns in early life to recognize long, slender shapes is generally being safe to eat. It's just like this plastic worm. It's long and slender, and it looks very, very safe to eat. Bait fish with soft fins such as shiners, darters, shad, and chubs have that long, slender profile, just like this plastic worm. They're easy to eat. They go down very, very easy. Whereas uh, little squatty things like bluegill, they're a little bit more difficult to eat. Other forage that meets this certain criteria are eels, small snakes, like the plastic worm, and salamanders, all of which are big bass favorites. Bass instinctively know that a shiner is much easier to swallow than a bluegill, like I just said, that has the spiny raised dorsal fin. If one of these little spiny fins gets stuck in his throat, the prey may be very difficult or impossible to swallow. Plastic worms, like I just mentioned, and slender minotype lures catch some of the biggest bass in the record books. There's a fish hit right over there. Oh. 
It was good old fish, I can tell you that. Get that ribbon tail out of your big face. Look at that. Isn't that a pretty one? We finally did get one. Finally got one. Oh, oh, oh. See ya. Bill Dance question and answer of the week is brought to you by Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. Whether you're fishing for panfish, bass, catfish, or light saltwater, we have an action for you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. How important is boating safety? There's a boatload of truth to the saying. There's no such thing as being too safe. Boating safety is paramount, but since we anglers are in and out of them so much, we may get a little lax and take safety precautions for granted. Now that's dangerous. Visit the U.S. Coast Guard website for safety tips. Always keep safety in mind, as well as the safety of those who share the water. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And by Garmin Force Trolling Motors, fish with force. Closed captioning provided by PowerPole, the original shallow water anchor. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. You know, I'm always looking for a better monofilament line. No more, I found one. Trilane's XL. XL's formula has 20% greater knot strength, 50% greater wet strength, and 20% more flexibility than the original formula. What more can you ask for? Berkeley XL. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Were you aware that lure presentation is one of the most important parts of a fishing lure? How much importance do you put on lure presentation? Let me tell you something I learned many, many years ago about this game. The correct presentation, since we're talking about presentation, this is something that's really important. You know, presentation isn't just a good thing. Most times, it's the only thing. And it really surprises me just how many fishermen pay absolutely no attention to their presentation. They've got one technique for fishing a jig, one technique for fishing a plastic worm, one for a crankbait, one method for working a buzzbait, and like I said, one system for fishing the plastic worm, and that's it. And as a result, they're fishing by many, many catchable bass. They could absolutely catch if they would only do one thing, and that's slow down and work their lure correctly. The more presentations you make in your allotted time on the water, the more chances you'll have of catching more fish. Something else I've learned is that the really big bass I've been blessed to catch were caught on just the perfect presentation. The bigger the bass, the less likely it'll be caught on a faster retrieve. I got one right out of the boat, but he's got me hung. The good fish. He's on it, see him pumping it. He's got it all down in that. See, he's still on it. See him pulling on it. Oh, he's got the broad tip down in the water now. I see the fish. He's a big one too. I get this jacket off. I get it. Don't break off. Just hang on there, buddy. 
Hang on there, buddy. I'm coming after you. Just don't get off. All right, I'm gonna try it. Hope this works. Come here, fish. That's the line. I can't reach the fish. I got my hands on the fish. No, I don't. I got my hands on the fish now. Oh! I broke him. And he's a good one, too. Boy, he was wrapped around all that stuff. Look at that. Woo! I don't get all that stuff. Look at the size of that. Well, that's what she was wrapped around. There he is. You big. You ain't wore out as I am. Look at that. What a way to end the day. That's what, look, look. The worm still hung on it. Well, almost. Okay, I'm gonna turn you loose. I'm gonna throw you over here where you can go home. Tuffy. Bye bye. The old Bass Pro ribbon tail scores again. Yes, it does. Well, now you know what I know, and I hope it helps you catch a few more fish. It's time to go, and I've really enjoyed today. But remember what Albert Einstein said, wisdom is not a product of schooling, but a lifetime attempt to acquire it. So get out there and go fishing. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. No, I'm going fishing with you.